Welcome to Chew the Fat. I am your host, Smooth, and today we have a very special guest with us. You see the title, you see what's going on. We're going to be talking about, yes, the Passport Bros. And I found an excellent gentleman who is a perfect example on who to discuss this with. We're going to allow him to introduce himself. We are going to bring him in right about now. Let the people know who it is you are. What's happening? All right, now, man, boy. Yo, so I'm Emmy Davis on Facebook, but I go by the Superior Man. Um, I've been doing this now, content creation for a couple of years, but I've got serious about it over the last three months. And since then, man, it's my goal is to impact men's lives. My goal is to reach 10,000 men effectively and help us have better lives as men in masculinity. So that's where I come from. That's my stance. And that's what I'm working to improve on every day. Awesome. 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 Now here comes the fun part, right? So, you know, we have a little bit of questions here. What I do want okay. to know, first of all, is what is it that uh, made you decide that you wanted to help men? Was there any particular experience? Did you just say, you know what, uh, one day you had an epiphany? Um, was it over time? Go ahead and let us know a little bit about that. Okay, so um, I went through a divorce three years ago, and it was one of the hardest trials of my life. And going through that, I thought I would have certain friends. I thought I have family members. I thought I have these people to pitch in to be a support system, but I had nobody. And, and I didn't have the voices that I thought I would have. And so you go through this depression stage, people leave, you, you start off with friends and mutual family members, mutual friends, and people pick a side and they just disappear at your life. Mm. So I, I had some brothers reach out to me just encourage me to do basic stuff like, bro, just get out the bed today. Bro, just go oh, touch wow. your door. So, so just go so, touch so, your so, door. So, so. Hold on, I gotta stop you there for a second. <laughs> hold on, just a second, brother. Did you just tell me that there was a point in your life where you had um, close friends that had to tell you to just get out of bed today? Did it, it got to that point? Absolutely. Um, I moved him to one of my Airbnb properties um, and I was there uh, waiting for the divorce or whatever, but man, I was so depressed and so down. I didn't want to leave my house. I didn't even want to go get food. And one of my church members would call me, checking on me like, hey man, listen, I know you don't want to talk about it. I know you everything good. You're going to say everything good. But bro, have you been up today? Like, no, nah, man, I ain't, I ain't did nothing. He was like, well, man, just get out the bed today. And I'll tell him, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to call you back. And I wouldn't do it. I just sat there and watched YouTube like the rest of the world during the pandemic. <laughs> and Whoa. so. It, it, this is oh, so this happened right about the time of the beginning 20, of the pandemic as well. Oh, man. Yes, sir. That was already a time. And what I did notice about people who were dealing with the pandemic was that if you had depression, it was amplified. If you had anxiety, it was amplified. Right. If you had if you were paranoid, you were now ultra paranoid because that isolation just does something to you on a whole, just for you not being able to interact uh, with people. But then in addition to that, you having your family taken away from you. Did you also have children together or? We did. We did. Oh, so, Ooh, so you got so that, that, that had to be ultra devastating. And what, Bro, I, what I do notice, <laughs> people it's, don't. It's like going through go grief. Of, it's like going through grief of someone that died but you grieve them even while they live. So wow. it's, it, it's bad, bro. You got to grieve the loss as if they died. And so because of that, man, like it's, it's really hard for men to get back up and men love to just try to figure things out by themselves. They love to just go into oh, shelter. Yeah. That's how we're they don't need nobody we're actual problem solvers, right? We're not, we're, and um, <laughs> it just doesn't seem, it just doesn't seem masculine for us to need someone else's aid. You know what I mean? It, it's not manly. That's not what society tells us. It tells us that, hey, no, you got to figure it out. I'm absolutely guilty of it till this day, right? To this day, <laughs> I don't want nobody help or nothing. Like, and I got the homies who help with certain things like that. But when it comes to, um, dealing with things as far as how I feel or emotions and if it things I um 
I mean, it, I guess it's debatable whether I handle it in a um, constructive or positive manner or not. But I definitely do turn t- within rather within. than ask for anybody else. And um, and I don't know. So far, I haven't seen any adverse effects from it. But I can all I, I also have friends who just don't. And sometimes they need to vent. And I love to help people. And I'm not so silly as to where just because I say, hey, this works for me, that it doesn't work for ev- like it's not going to work for everybody else. And I understand that everybody has different levels of intellect. Everybody has different levels of emotion everybody has different physical abilities and if i see somebody who might be dealing with something i would love to help them and i do even though i don't feel like that now i understand it because as an adolescent i went through phases of anxiety went through phases of depression and heartbreak and everything else so i've had a taste of all of those feelings so i i know what it's like fortunately Mm -hmm. i'm i've been i've come to a place where i know how to manage it very differently but i do understand um, that is not something that's easy to manage. Right. But I want you to tell me a little bit more about that experience and how you may have um, risen from it and, and, and actually gotten to the point where you can help people. Well, I want to go back to something you said. You haven't seen that uh, advert effect. Well, we do know that men happen to die before women, right? Okay. You have shorter lifespans, right? Yes. That, and, that's a yeah, well-known yeah, fact. Yes. In general, right. yes, absolutely. Because in general, we keep everything bogged in. And you know you can die from stress. Did you know that? Oh, absolutely. Stress will kill you. Do absolutely. you know stress? stress will... You know stress is not an outward thing. It's all in your head. I do. Did you know that? I do. So I do. that means you can die. You can die from what you think about. How yes. crazy is that? Yes. You could think yourself you to can. death. <laughs> and so when men have shorter spans of lives, it's because of the stuff that we keep in. See, women use the outlet of their mouths, their friends, their association. They get the stuff out. We keep it in. And that toxin, that that negative energy, we keep it on the inside of us. And that's why we dying at an earlier rate than Early women. Rage. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we just change that and, and use outlets and give ourselves the opportunity to share those things that's hard then that is basically expand our lives and we could just now, get it out i do i do want to say one what i do want to add one thing to that um okay. so with me as far as me dealing within i mean like just not sourcing any anything externally not to say i don't have outlets um mm-hmm. i do make sure that i'll do workout me being creative is actually mm-hmm. soothing for me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, no, seriously, you have to know yeah, how to- I know, it's therapeutic, that's why I want We all need some type of therapy, right? And I love <laughs> to drive and play with fast cars. Those outlets, I make sure that, and I don't do it often, but just often enough, and I keep myself mm-hmm. occupied. And I don't, I'm not, and, and, and then it's another thing about perspective. There are some things that you just don't like, that you don't appreciate in life, but it's also about understanding um, what other people are dealing with. And I realized that my life it, it can also be worse. I'm striving to be better and I'm mm. motivated to do well for my family, for my wife, different things. So, you know what I'm saying? So I understand that you must have some sort of an outlet, right? It may be a different type of outlet, maybe not necessarily people. And I'm going to tell you another thing that's therapy for me, me being able to help someone else's life. Um, I've helped, I've helped people with their finances, right? Get your credit, right? Tell you how to do that. Credit hacks, different things, um, how to deal with the relationships, how to deal with friendships, everything. Uh, just, just help yourself out. I've helped a lot of people who I do know. And naturally now I'm getting a bunch of DMS that people that I don't even know. And I help as much as I can. I charge for what it is that I do. Yes. But there are some people who are in positions that are not, and everybody does their pro bono situations, get it. So it is what it is. I do what I can to help. And that's another form of therapy for me, for me to understand that I'm helping another human with their lives, for them to be able to improve and for them to get into a better place. So one thing that men have to understand, in my personal opinion, is that we need to have some sort of an outlet, right? And it doesn't necessarily have to be violent. It doesn't have to necessarily be negative. It just has to be something that puts your mind at ease and keeps the stress levels down and don't sleep on the health. Go get yourself checked out. All of those things that you know, you're supposed to get checked. That's are very uncomfortable when you get to your thirties and forties, go ahead and do that. You got to do it. You got to make sure you're putting the right food in your body. 
because that also contributes to stress, right? Having <clears throat> the wrong type of toxins in your body. You need to have, you need to eat the right amount of spices to expel toxins. You need to have the right amount of water, electrolytes. So it's just about taking care of yourself and trusting that you're going to be good just by how you nourish your body, nourish your mind, and make sure you're good spiritually. Mm. Well, amen to that. <laughs> right. So, but, but bro, <laughs> bar. <laughs> so, bro, that's so that was one of the things for me, bro, is that um, as I went through one of those stressful times, uh, if it had not been for this church member, I still would have stayed in that place of depression. Wow. And he just Shout kept calling him. until until I eventually started getting out the bed. Then I started getting okay. dressed. And then his thing was he would call me every day and say, hey, you stay across the street from a park. Just go walk a lap around the park. It took me about a month to do it. To do it. I would get fully he stayed to on go you know, across I'm... the street to walk around the park. Dude, I would get fully dressed, go to the door, grab the handle, and then let it go and go back in there and take my clothes off and get back in the bed. So it was one of those times. Wow. Um, so from that space, um, eventually, the end of that year, we actually get divorced. Um, and from that, I get back in this sexual market, <laughs> this sexual market, man. And it it's has different. been. You found out that it's different, right? <laughs> you felt like you came out of jail, like when you come back home and it's just all different. <laughs> yeah, it, it's totally different. <laughs> okay. It's okay, totally okay. different. Like, oh, uh, what's the movie Life? How? <laughs> oh, yeah. Martin, yeah. Yeah. Got yeah, all the yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> and you get that to seventy, everything yeah. looked different. So wow. um, I get in this market, and bro, it was different. But I never had a problem with females. Never been an issue. I, I'm very approachable. I'm very open and charismatic. And I got a personality. I love to talk. So women that has easy, never been easy a for you, right? I got you. Yeah, because the day I got divorced, I said, you know what? <laughs> I took this from a guy. Agent. I took this from a guy. He's a famous YouTuber. And he said what he do is he take bad days and turn them into good days. So he says right. bad days, he makes sure he remembers something good on a bad day. So the day I got divorced, I called my friend. I said, hey, let's go uh, to the bar. Let's go have fun. He was like, bro, did you just get divorced today? I said, I know, but I got to remember something good about today. <laughs> and then he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, so we yeah, meet that's, at a that's, spot that's so... <laughs> Remember something good Bro. about the day. I, I hear you. So I vividly remember the divorce, the day of when the judge hit the gavel. But I also remember that night and how fun and exciting. And, and I met new people that same very night. And I wow. celebrated. Okay, so okay. I remember the okay. celebration over the destruction of a of a family of a marriage but i start using that as my callus dude whenever i have a bad day if i can't just take a nap and wake up and it'd be different then i'm gonna do something that's gonna make it good that i don't remember that day being that bad so no, it's no, about I, mindset that's, that's, that is absolutely um i can't stress that enough how it's mindset uh, we could do so many more things if we just understand that we can, right? It's about believing, about knowing, and then just in perspective, right? Mindset, perspective, because you can destroy yourself just because of your mind, but you can also build yourself into things that you Absolutely. couldn't have imagined to be just because of where your mind frame is. So that's that's one of the most important things for me. Um, so if we were going to ask, man, what, what is your current dating status as it is right now, man? Are you still single? You, um, you mangling or I'm focused. Oh, okay. 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 okay, okay. So, I, ooh. <laughs> so let's, let's go through a phase real quick. So I get okay. divorced. The month I get divorced, I meet a chick <laughs> on social oh. media. Start so going with this girl for about four months. And then I told okay. her, look, I just need time to heal. I, I done jumped in relationships. I've been doing this since a kid. When I get out of one, I'm immediately in another. And I say, I just need time to myself. And when I did that, I got into a dark place. <laughs> so I was setting up girlfriend. So from that moment forward, it's been three years. I don't do girlfriends. I don't do relationships. I mean, I may meet somebody. We have a good time. We have an amazing okay. time. But it ain't going to be no relationships over here. 
So that's no, kind of where I've been. Yeah. So I haven't done relationships. But okay. Well, I met a would lot you keep of a cool roster? people. Would you keep a roster or keep like you know like maybe um a friends with benefits? I call them buck buddies. You know what I mean? But somebody you keep on a team just for a little while that you might be cool with, or or is it like a flyby where it's like okay next? I cut the team. <laughs> so, <Okay. laughs> so it got bad, bro. When I tell okay. you it got bad, bro, it was like around 16 at once. Got it. And I had a space where I was into BDSM. So okay. I was being a dumb oh, nice. and all this other crap. You was, so, you was um, 50 Shades yeah. of Grey right now, huh? All oh, 50 you Shades. Up, you, just picked, <laughs> you just picked up at least 50 female fans right there. Shout out to you. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I played, I played daddy and, and man, that's just, it was amazing. It was fun, but it was also a coping mechanism. It, it didn't yeah. give me the opportunity yeah. to heal and okay. be the man okay. that I'm meant to be. So I'm doing those things and I realized that man, women, money, none of these things can heal you, right? No. It don't matter how much money you have, you still can extinguish yourself. Yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. It, and it don't matter about sex and it don't matter about female attention and female energy being around you because at the end of the day, if you're not whole, if you're not secure on who you are, if you're not focused on your nothing you put around nothing else gonna, gonna make you feel complete. Because at nothing. the end of the day, she got to get up and go. <laughs> and I'm going to be here all exactly. alone. <laughs> so I'm still going to have to deal with me, bro. So that's crazy. So we're going to jump into our main topic in a okay. moment, right? But I do want to know the um one thing what would you tell um men would be the most advisable way to deal with women right uh would you say would should you search for a long-term relationship uh should you try to get married would you say definitely don't get married would you say don't uh yeah what, what would you say about that if a man were to ask you just candidly hey look what should i do what direction should i go um what should i do all right we're gonna be honest right very honest i wouldn't have very it any honest. Other way. all right so uh one i need to know that man mindset because if he's okay. fixated on having a wife here then i give him the wisdom that i have that women wives here is no problem finding women in the u.s but it's a hard thing to find a wife in the US, right? God. So in the Western world, they have a Western mindset. Also, there's a system in the West that's against men. So that's the main thing that I I let men know about is you need to understand the system that you're up against as well as the mindset of the women here. So if you look for a wife here, I mean, listen, 50% of marriages make it. So uh -huh. I, I know yeah. we're to focus yeah. on the other side, but 50% no. make it, bro. <laughs> now, let, now, now, here's the one thing that we got to, um, that we need to ask. How about that? Here's the one thing <laughs> we need to ask. <laughs> How many of those 50% that survive do you think are like a well-oiled machine as far as being functional? Or do you think that a lot of people are together just because... It seems like uh, it'll probably be worse if I leave. I will probably lose all my my worth. I will probably lose access to my children. Um, I will probably fail my or disgrace my family. Right. So, mm -hmm. how many do you? How much of that do you think is a factor in the remaining fifty percent that actually are successful? Man, I love statistics, and the <laughs> fact that I mean, the the problem is there's no statistics on it. Because, right. again, no one's going to tell you who's supposed to be happily married that I'm not happy. <laughs> yeah, we could only... <laughs> <we could open. laughs> I, I want to leave her and I want to leave him. They can't say it while they married. They only say it when they hit the door. That's hard, bro. It, I, I can't do it. I won't do it. Because <laughs> happiness, okay. happiness is not a factor for marriage. It's duty over happiness. It's the commitment it over is. happiness. And... And if we use happiness as the parameter, as the thermometer, uh, a lot of them going to go through <laughs> divorce. That's why the other 50 is where they are, because they was choosing yeah. happiness over commitment. And so 
I, I like the fact that they chose duty and they chose to be responsible and they chose to vow what they promised over everything else. Vows over everything. So I do like that. I appreciate that. And the ones that are not happy, man, I pray for them. I hope they get the therapy that they need, the counseling. I just wish them the best. The ones who continue to fight, man, I, I just pray they continue to fight. So I, I have nothing negative to say about it. I'll, t I'll tell you what I think. I think it's probably about another 25, right? And um, I could tell you what I, what I usually say about this situation, right? Um, and neither here nor there. This is just to give people a, a, an idea of what I think it is, right? I think that out of those okay. people who are made, a lot of them are not happy. And I don't think that that should be your primary goal like you were alluding to just now. I think that's right. But I think that you should strive for it, right? And... I have an unorthodox way of obtaining it. Some people may agree. Some people may not. But what I tell people is the best way to go into a relationship is to be selfish. And the reason why I say that, and I know, I know, I know, I know what y'all thinking. I know what y'all thinking. I know what y'all thinking. What? I say <laughs> you should go in there with every habit that you already have. Be 100% mm. yourself. If you are a slob, then you be that off the rip. If you were OCD, you be that off the rip. If you don't like to go home and you are a homebody, okay, do that. Do not try to impress them. If you like to go out, then you do that. Whatever it is that you like, you do it unapolog unapologetically, right? So mm. but the problem with that is I want you to find a partner who is good with that, right? Who already likes you for you, accepts you for you versus you trying to impress them because after the six month honeymoon period, they're going to get the real you anyway. But how about if that person fell in love with what it was that you were originally and that you can be yourself comfortably knowing that that person is going to like what it is that you already are. Right. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just one of those situations. Like, so let's just say, remember you were saying you did the whole uh, BDSM, right? It works out perfect. If you are uh, a sadist, right. And then you find yourself a masochist. That's perfect. You're being selfish. You're getting your need. They're getting their need, right? And it works. Right. You're both being selfish, but you being selfish is actually fulfilling the other person's needs. So that, that's, that's what I mean in that way. So the less you hide in the beginning, the more honest you are, and the less you try to impress somebody, the more likely I really feel that you can last in a relationship. I don't know how mm -hmm. you feel about that, but what do, what do you think in that take on it? Do you think that? Man, it, it just reminded me of a of something the week I was going to get married. One of my coworkers, okay. older man, he was about 60 by, at that time. And he asked me before I got married, he said, can you, um, can you deal with what you don't like about her for a lifetime? Wow. And I was like, huh? He's like, what you don't like about her? Can you deal with that for a lifetime? Because that's what you're signing up. Because yeah. she may never change what you don't like. And if it never changed, are you able to put up with it for a lifetime? If your answer is yes, then you're ready to marry. If your answer is no and you want her to change, then you shouldn't be getting married yet. Oh. Shout out to the game right there because he was he was yeah. um he was very accurate with that. And I think that's the one hundred percent. One hundred percent. One of the biggest <laughs> mistakes people make in a relationship is trying to change each other. You can't make somebody more miserable than trying to take them out of their comfort zone. If someone wants to get out of their comfort zone, they can't. But you can't make somebody get out of their comfort zone. You can't change a person. That's the worst thing that you can do is try to change somebody. They won't change for you. And even if they try to fraud, it doesn't last very long. You're going to consistently have to battle them with that. You know what I'm saying? If you have a um, a woman who's not feminine, you can't beat her into submission. Women are not selectively sub feminine. That's that's nonsense. If she's not mm. feminine off rip, she's not going to become feminine because she met this guy that's ideal or a man <laughs> who can bring who who can activate yeah. her femininity. That would right. if and the, the problem with that is if you ever told a man um, that if a man said, hey, you know what? I'm normally feminine, but uh, I just need the right woman to activate my masculinity. I don't mm. think that many women would be interested in that guy. Hey, you know no. what I'm saying? Like, you see, you see what I'm saying? And when you tell them that, they're like, no, but it's different. 
but how is it different? And then they can't say anything. So I'm like, come on, man, what are we talking about? We just have to use a little more, a little bit more logic, a little more reasoning. And men have to do it because men really don't understand that either. They'll hear a woman say that, right? That, um, oh yeah, well, he's going to have to unlock my feminine. Be like, oh, okay, well, I'll be that dude. I'm going to make her feminine. I'm going to make her. Fem no, you won't. No, you won't. Yeah. You just gonna be jumping through hoops trying to make her feminine, <laughs> only to be disappointed. <laughs> yeah. That's just the way it's yeah. gonna go, man. So, and I mean, I mean, they can turn it on because in BDSM, uh, being a daddy dom, um, they can turn it on, but it don't last for long. That's why I yes. had to never, find, exactly, never right. be a relationship right. or any of that. Exactly. We just have session. Exactly. <laughs> you got me. And anybody, anybody yeah. can fraud and play that game for a little bit, but eventually, for a little bit, person's yeah. gonna come out. You already know. You already. When know. I try to go on dates with them, it, it goes to the modern one. <laughs> I'm like, oh, never mind. You know what? Let's do Wednesdays at seven o'clock. I see you next week. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she to the oh, I already That's know, it. bro. <laughs> Word. Yeah. So. We got the topic at hand here, man. I know y'all saw the title. It says Passport Bros, right? So now I've been studying this a little bit. I've been listening to a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, I have traveled to some other countries. Some were uh, third world countries. I've seen a little bit of what it could be like. Now, I want to know from your perspective because th they get a lot of heat man and we're going to get into some of the heat that they get what do you think <laughs> what do you think about the passport bros um everything that you know like in a in a i guess sum it up into like a minute or so everything that you okay. know and then we'll, we'll we'll go ahead and go back and forth with that but i want to hear from you your perspective of it do you think it's a good thing do you think it's a bad thing what do you think about it let me know what's up with the passport bros okay well, first disclaimer, uh, I'm not a passport bro. I'm not part of the organizational group. Uh, yeah, one, I, I have my own, and it's, I'm, <laughs> I'm calling it Kings Wanted. And what I'm doing is focusing on countries that's susceptible to black men that, that would love and adore and want African-American men. So that's kind of where I focus on those different countries and areas. Um, but when it comes to passport bros, I mainly have to use the hashtag um, to start getting the traction of the Kings Wanted. My focus is on wives, not just going to have a good time. Now, Passport Bros, some of them enjoy having a good time, but some are looking for wives, and we try to put them all in a box, and they try to talk down on men having options. I'm about men having the best options possible, and if it's not here, then if he's able to go there, then he should go. He got the money. He got the freedom. He can work remote. And do what's best for you, bro. That's all I got to say. Got it. Okay. Now, um, here's one of the main things that I want to touch on first that you just said. You said there are certain countries that are more welcoming to black men. What um can you name just a couple, just for an example? Like what do you which ones may be a good place for people that would want to know where to go? Okay, so right now we started in January. And what I do is one country a month. So right now we're on third month, we're doing Thailand. Last month we did uh, the DR, Dominican Republic. And the month before that, we did the Philippines. So we talk yeah. about the pros and cons of each country. Um, How about that? Like, so if you wanted the DR, then you got to understand the cons. The majority, it's only 0.15% speak English. So if you're going to go to the DR, then you got to realize you got to learn Spanish. Now, they look like the homegirl of the street, but you got to learn Spanish, my brother, to get them and keep gotcha. them right? <laughs> to be able to understand gotcha. them. But a place like the Philippines, they learn English in kindergarten. So oh, they wow. they speak English. They have the same type of educational system here. Matter of fact, they have the same percentage of graduates from college every year as the U.S., the same percentage. So okay. you would think because they're third world, they uneducated, but that's a false narrative because you don't know them or you haven't done your research. And so and one thing that I, the one thing I want to talk about, um, just really quick with this, um, 
Okay. A lot of people get the idea just because a country doesn't have the resources that they don't have the education, right? A lot of women, mm. you see that um, they really try to make it seem like women, like with a lot of the TikTok bashers, they say that women are stupid, women are naive, <laughs> taking advantage right. of them. You hear all of these things, right? Like crazy. They, they go yeah. hard, like thinking that these women are stupid. And I'm like, um, so you're kind of discriminating just a bit. You're assuming just because. Oh, I know. Country... Not a bit, a lot. Okay. <laughs> a lot. Go ahead. Have go you ahead, seen go the ahead, clap uh, Have you seen the clap back? What's the clap you have? Back? What's the clap? Back? Uh, what's the clap back? When the women go and speak up for themselves in the Philippines oh, yeah, and yeah, Thailand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. There was there was one lady who man, was going them, hard. Them there, was one, there was one lady who was going hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they come back going really hard. That I saw, I, I did, and they, and they explained it like we're not naive, we're not stupid. Uh, why would you even think that? That's you know racist by default by you telling me like just because right. we're from this country we're dumb we're third world and. Like I said, some countries don't have the resources, but it doesn't mean that they're not educated. It doesn't mean that they don't have any sense at all, no common sense that you could just run game on them and they're naive and stupid. Like that doesn't, that has nothing to do no. with, with the two. And, and a lot of people feel like they're being taken advantage of. But what people don't realize is that uh, we were the ones who were indoctrinated on the West side over here. We were the ones on. who were given this Come crazy on. system, right? Would you, would you tell them that this is, this is, this is where we at? Like we had been indoctrinated. There was, I mean, and you can just tell just biologically what our roles are, right? For the most part. And right. we are the only place everywhere else, right? Most of the world, we're in our little bubble. We are the ones who were really naive because we don't know anything outside of our little box and inside of our TikTok world, mm. Instagram. Most people don't travel anywhere beyond their phone. That's the most traveling they ever do is right here looking at their phone. They don't know what's going on in these other countries. A lot of people who talking about passport pros never even don't even have a passport. <laughs> and don't even know any of the men, don't know the cultures they talk about, never met any of these women, but they got so much to say. Like I was talking to another uh, YouTuber. I was like, man, it's crazy how people like to give advice about stuff they don't know. Like they got mm -hmm. so much controversy to argue points on things they know nothing about. People just love to talk about stuff they don't know nothing about. And it's crazy. It's crazy, bro. Yeah, I, but I've seen a lot of, go ahead. I, I would say this, bro. So when it comes to passport bros uh, and the pushback that they get is because you're talking about two different sectors, right? It's two different groups. It's one group that enjoy being around feminine women but they go to have fun, right? Yeah. So they go from country to country and they're going to have fun. Nobody say anything when it's girl trips. What are they doing when they go to Africa? Ooh. Oh, when they go when they okay. go to the okay. DR. Okay. What are they doing okay. when they go to Jamaica? Okay. What are they doing when they go to Paris? It looks like it looks like it looks like. What are they doing when they go to the UK? Come on, what are they doing when they go to Dubai? Bro, this sounds like S tourism, just like. What they are <laughs> accusing the men of. They do the same thing. They go to Miami, they do it. They go to uh, Cabal, Cancun, and do it. I mean, these are the places you can travel without a passport. Bro. But, um, Bro, you know, they, 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 got... they reported that even in the DR, some American women who can speak Spanish well are going over to the DR and doing the exact same thing, making the men believe that they are from, that they are Dominican. And we'll oh, get the money out of them just like a Dominican woman. So you know what they come over there for. And you went over there for the same thing. <laughs> it's crazy, man. What? It's foolish. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing. So they got American Bro. women going over there pretending to be Dominican. Pretending. Oh, man. Get out of here. Just to get the money out of the men. But Ooh. at the end of the day, okay, but those men went over there for that purpose. But what the men got was exactly what they wanted. See, yeah. I heard this guy named Patrice O'Neal. You ever heard of Patrice oh, yeah, O'Neal? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yep. He community. a godfather for sure. But he was big on going to Brazil. He get all his guys, his radio friends, his comedian, and he take them over there to Brazil. And what he mm -hmm. compared was, yes, we can have fun over here in the U.S. But even if I go to Vegas to have fun, I still got to deal with her attitude. She's still going <laughs> to have the Western mindset. 
Yep. But I go over there. Yep. This girl actually treat me like she's my girlfriend. I know she a prostitute. I know she go. As soon as I leave, it's gonna be somebody else come over. But the level of respect that she give me when I'm in her you know prison, what? I feel like a you king. Know, you know. You know what they call that? That's kind of like the um the GFE experience. You know what I'm saying? That's that's mm. what I, that's what I see with that. Oh, we're gonna have to break. We're gonna have to. Oh, his girlfriend is okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, but they're willing to give you that, so you getting what you want. You getting a feminine, soft, a uh, woman that's beautiful at that. Uh oh, can you hear me? Cause I can't hear you. No, you good. You good. You good. You good. Okay, you back in. But yeah, but men are that choose to go that route. They're paying for an experience, and they can afford to do it because one. They got their passports. Two, they paying for flights. Three, they paying for a hotel. Four, they paying for the tourism they doing. And five, they paying the woman. So they got money to do what they're doing. Oh yeah, yeah. Not, they, they, these they, are not the brokies. <laughs> brokies are not doing this, and they doing it multiple times a year. That's not the broke guys. So all that that's the that's the men that was undesirable to the women. That's not true, because one, if you ain't got no game, or if you don't know how to approach a woman here. You're not going to magically be able to approach women because you went to another country. If you were shy, introvert, and you're nervous to talk to women, guess what? You're not going to be able to do it in Singapore. You're not going to be able to do it in now, Thailand. Uh, um, I want to, I want to, uh, I want to talk about that a little bit, right? So, okay. Here's here's what I noticed, right? So, like when I when I grew up in uh, Newark, New Jersey, right, and one of the hardest places to get a woman shout to new york city but trust it is tough right like if you if this is what i realized if you had game there then you pretty much had universal game almost mm. right like um mm. it's, it's, it's tough it's tough it's tough hold but on which city are you talking about which city new jersey newark new jersey new jersey Okay, yeah. got it. And just that area, that area in general, right? Um, I didn't realize that until I went to other places. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And I ain't even had to do it. I'm like, wait, what? You know what I'm saying? So it's it's almost like anywhere else that you just go and there's like it's a crazy survival ground, and then when you just go somewhere else where it's just not that, you're like, Oh man, this is this is just easy. This is just heaven. Like anywhere mm -hmm. that I went, bro, outside of that, easy pickings. Easy pickings. So and then when you go overseas, I mean, I'm not going to say it's easier per se. Absolutely. If you're awkward, that's pretty much universal, right? If you are uh, <laughs> right. clumsy, <laughs> that's pretty much universal, right? If you are, um, if you lack confidence, pretty much universal. But um, I think that there still is a degree of difficulty here that you don't get from there only because... Um, women don't have the same form of resentment that they mm. do for you that they have here, right? Uh, women have less respect for what it is that men do here, right? Our jobs are constantly minimized. Our roles are constantly minimized. So women have a different idea of what a man is here. So I, I, don't, I think that just those things alone just a frame of mind that the women have um, towards men and how different the respect is. And you know how closely love is tied into with respect. The idea that women respect you more when you're outside of America in general, not always because there are some beautiful women here who do respect men and do have traditional values yeah. and all of that. Absolutely. However, um, by and large, when you go to someplace else, you were absolutely treated differently. And I would say just by that, just because of the level of respect and the way you are viewed by the women there versus how you are over here, uh, then you understand that many women over here just have a natural disdain for men and put up videos glorifying how they nuked a man when he tried to push up. And, and you know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's just some of the toxic culture we have. And, and uh, people really don't mention how that is really misandry at its finest, but no one ever Absolutely. calls them on that at all, right? But that doesn't really exist 
outside of Western civilization. That's not a thing where people take pride in destroying men's feelings. Like there's some sort of a sadistic culture we have here where it's fun to do this to people and post it mm -hmm. for everyone to see and further embarrass them. Not that the people locally was enough, but I'm just going to make sure the entire world can see how I completely destroyed your feelings. I mean, I don't know. What are you thinking about that? Man, I think <laughs> it reminded me of a Kevin Samuels episode, but um, okay. it's just, it's crazy, bro. Cause one, it's hard to look past the fact that you don't respect men, right? So you, these women saying, why aren't you choosing us? I seen a little video from a clip of a movie, but she was like, she's not younger than me. She's not smarter than me. She's not, uh, she don't weigh less than me. She's not smaller than me. Why would you choose her? Why not choose me? And this was his wife. He said, because she's softer than you. She's quieted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. respects that clip. You know, that yeah. video. So yeah. it's a breakdown of the difference between the westernized woman who think, well, I'm here as long as I show up, that's good enough, right? It don't matter how I talk to you, degrade you. Well, if you can go back and look at the Bible, it, it says that a woman is to respect her husband and a husband to love his wife. And see, because women in these other countries are showing respect, it's easy to love. The women yeah. that refuse to show respect, it's hard to love them. We can't do one without the other. They have to respect in order for us to love. Women don't produce love. They have love for their children, but not in relationships. When it comes to relationships, love only comes from a man. I'm going to break it down. I, oh, no. I explained this. To, go ahead and go ahead and get oh, okay. it. Okay, I, I explained this to one sub once. I'm like, hey, you you don't love me because <laughs> she tried to say something. Else. No, no, you don't love me because only reason you would say you love me is because the things I do for you. If I stop doing them, you will fall out of what you call love. So love is only produced when a man is doing something right to that particular woman. When she he checks all her bosses, she falls in love. Got it? So, so again, if love comes from me, I can't give it to you if you can't seem to respect me. And I don't have a problem with Western women being Western and they martyrize that and you working and you're doing all those things. My problem is I know that I'm in the wild, wild west. And I know you got this invisible gun that you can use on me any time you feel like it. You could strip away my kids. You could take my 401k. You could take half of my assets. You can trigger that and hit that faucet whenever you feel like it. There's too yeah. many divorces that was filed for unreconcilable differences. And you're awarded half of everything I got. No matter what legacy I was trying to build with you, you able to just destroy it. Absolutely. And that's the Western so, mindset, bro. So, so with that, right, um, that basically how you sum, I would sum it up what you just said as love is conditional, right? Men are not loved unconditionally. So it is different because um, you can just put that to the test once you once you um, don't do what it is that it that got you into the relationship in the first place. You'll see how quickly. I don't want to say that. I don't want to put my business out there, but I'm going to do it anyway. So. <laughs> If, if I'm dealing with a female and she tell me she loved me, I just pull back. All the stuff I was doing, I stop doing it and watch how quick she fall out of love. Yeah, <laughs> I just absolutely. do it because, because it's not real to me. I know you don't really love me. You don't have the capacity. Only thing you can do is just show me a level of respect. That's it. That's all you can do. Just continue to do that. I continue to show you what love is, but you having it towards me, I don't, I don't believe. I yeah, don't accept and, um, it. And, I know and the, weird, the weird thing about it is that most most women will accuse men of not being able to love, but women don't really have to do very much to be loved. You know what I'm saying? We're required mm -hmm. to do quite a bit, particularly in Western civilization. You have to be a protector. You have to be a uh, provisioner. You have to be a problem solver, right? Like when there's things that go wrong and then you can't do it. Watch, watch how quickly your female decides to turn on you 
and lash out and lose all respect when you can't address something that she wants fixed. No matter I don't think that's Western. You I don't. I don't agree. That's not Western. I think that's universal. Because if I was to get a woman in Philippine, oh, I yeah, stopped no, about. No, 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 that's, that's real. Yeah, they universal. That's that's the woman because that's what they built for, built to do. Yeah, they need to be cared for, to be loved. They're not to not be loved. They are built to be loved. That's why we have it to give them. Right? We're created to give oh, yeah, them that yeah. thing. I, my but, fault if I said it like that. I meant, I meant, I meant um, women in general. Just women in general. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah, universal. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. if I stop doing yeah, 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 those yeah. same things in Thailand, yeah, no matter, it's no, the no, 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 no. <laughs> Never like you've done. <laughs> this is just a, a woman thing biologically. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, man, I, I love women, man. I just wish, I wish we wasn't in the system we were in. And it wasn't so hard against women um, because they are actually the victims of it. I don't, I don't look at them as the abuser. Okay. But I know, I know that they understand that they in that system when it benefits them, then they understand it. They can act like, oh well, no, I'm not. I won't do this. I won't do that. I'm not that type of woman. But again, it's an invisible gun. Wow, wow, west. If things get hard. She can whip that gun out on you. The at attorney point, on her side. At any point. <laughs> your at attorney point. on her side. The judge <laughs> on her side. At the so, end of the day, she can whip him out whenever she feel like it. And so much so that you can go get a foreign woman, bring her over here and put her in this pollution. And eventually she, my analogy always, it's like fresh rainwater. These women are fresh water. But if they come over here to this Western Ocean, they immediately become salty. It's so many right. women that come over here, get the green card, and they let you go. Right? Damn. That's that's a yeah, thing that people know that's about. Thing. That's the thing. Yeah, people know about that. So right. if so, let me ask you this. If you were going to advise someone, hey, listen, now you want a wife, what's your best strategy? Where, where would you ooh. say is a really good place to look, and how would you go about that? Right? They want a wife, though. They want a wife. They want to settle down. They want kids. They want that nuclear family. That's what they that's what they are craving. What what would you say to that? I say don't be objective to leaving the West. So most of my followers, my encouragement has always been, hey, if you have the ability, if you have the finances, if you can work remote, then live, marry remote. Still make the US dollar while you live and and the Philippines, uh, that was okay. the last one. So I, I'm gonna Got keep it. talking about it. Well, now, make the US dollar while you do it. Got it. So, and that'll be your best that, solution. Right. Now, that is that is a great idea for those of us who can do that, right? Now, um, there's a couple, there is a couple things that come with that, right? You have to learn the culture. Um, you have to get used to their infrastructure, their internet bandwidth, different things. Um, you have to learn a new language, uh, at, right? At least one new language that you have to master. Those are not the, the end of the world. Now, yeah. it depends on which one you go to. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, if you go to um, some places, even no matter what, some of us are able to do that and just say, you know what, let me get out of here. But there's a lot of gentlemen who can't like, no, man, I'm like 24. I'm like 23 years in or yeah. 20 years or 15 years. in. I got 10 more years and then I get my pension. Then I'll be good. Do I have to wait mm -hmm. 10 years before I find a good woman? What, what would you say to somebody who's like 15 years in got 10 more years before they get their pension? Um, what should they do if they, if they are looking for love and they, they kind of are uh, fed up with Western civilization. They're like, you know what? I do want to try it. How do I do it? Um, do, is she going to be poisoned when she gets over here? Like, what, what would you say to do for somebody like that? Um, so some of the guys do this. They go to those places, they travel, and they find okay. a wife, a woman that's wife material. They let okay. her stay in that place. Now, you could take the chance and bring her over, um, but they just have a girlfriend or a fiance that live in a native country or with oh, okay. the plans that when they retire, that that's where they're going, right? So they may have arrangements or whatever they need to do when they do get vacation, when they do take trips, 
he go see his girl. Occasionally, he pay for her to come here. But for her to live here, it's never <laughs> the option. It should never be the option unless you want to increase your chance of divorce. You want to increase your chance of her adopting this mindset. Um, I will give a quick story. <laughs> it, was, it was a guy just telling me yesterday. He was on the side of the, the in-between. There's good women here. I don't understand why brothers getting passports and doing this. I don't understand why they investing their money into it. I, I, you know, like he's at the titter totter. He understand it, but not really. And then he told me his brother's story, how his brother travels abroad. He was in the military and he got a wife over in DR, came over here in the U.S. She started listening to her friends, these, these new friends, the beauty shop, the nail salon. And she came to him one day and said, you know what? If I leave you, I get half. And it just came out of nowhere. He like, what? And within a short period of time, she left him and she took half because she had got the advice from other people. Ooh. So she left him. <laughs> he went back to the military. He went on to realistic, got in it, got over here to the Philippines, found him a wife, <laughs> been happily married since. And his brother asked him, hey, uh, are you going to ever come back home? You going to bring her here? He's like, no, I never bring my I never bring my wife over there to the U.S. I'm going to stay over here in exactly. the Philippines. It's good for me. My money go farther. I never leave and never bring her to that uh, environment. So when I was talking to him and I gave him the example, he triggered. He was like, that's exactly now it makes sense. I see why my brother say he never going to bring her over here. It makes perfect sense because the Dominican woman left him when she got here. She was head over heels until she started listening to the people. Bro, I get it now. Yeah. It and makes here, perfect and sense. And here's another thing, too. People can't ignore the fact that women are hypergamous, right? Um, yeah. And they're they going to want the bigger, better deal. If you are the yeah. best thing that they feel like they have access to, then you are protected, right? For the most part, right? Not a hundred percent, but for the most part, you're good. Now, if you are that dude over in DR, then you come over here and she's thinking that you living in like Scarface or something, right? Or <laughs> you are here with the big mansions and, and the trees and, you know, but then you like, oh, he live in a little condo, but this isn't what I saw on TV. I saw the spiral staircases and the his and her mm -hmm. uh, bathroom sinks and you know, the the uh, Viking kitchen appliances and, you know, the Olympic-sized pool and ooh, the sauna, like, and the Bentleys and the four-bay garage. Like, but, I mean, you got a garage, you got a decent car, but, like, it's a Lexus. It's not a, it's not a Bugatti. I, like, what? And then she see this guy, she go to the club. This guy got, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She on the gram looking like, oh, man, where, these, where he at? I need to get a hint. Hold on. Let me see what I can do. So I could take half his resources. He living good enough to where I could at least be okay just on my own. Don't get married again. Now, I could get a whole nother dude and then mm. get whatever money off of whoever. And then she was able, and from that situation you were saying, it seems like she didn't even get knocked up. So she's not even a single mother. She just killed them she came up she had the ultimate come up yeah. she did probably nothing for it she gamed homeboy for a little bit and is entitled to have his assets for nothing and you know some of those laws are absurd because it's like as a man your your primary function was to provide right and your whole life is compromised because of it forever mm. and you're yeah. not going to be with her forever now as far as whatever duties that she may have had, she is relinquished from all responsibility. How is that? How is that? How does like, you know what I mean? Like, what do we do? How? 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 About how, that? how? How? Like, I I have to pay you to do what now? We're no longer together. What am I paying you to do? Whatever it was that you do, you don't do anymore. I can't be like, hey, you know what, uh, Mr. Judge, check me out. Like she used to, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, are we? Are, is she still obligated to do that? Is she still obligated to make me a sandwich once in a while? Because I still have to pay her for it. She's not here. <laughs> I have to pay her for it, right? So, what is she providing me? What service is she providing me now that I'm paying for? 
for the next 20 mm. years, you know, 30 years, or whatever. You know who that sound so, like? You know who that sound like? Who that Something sound that like? was in the news recently. Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods had his oh, girlfriend yeah. dropped him to yeah, the yeah, airport. Yeah, 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 yeah. This chick is yeah. suing for $30 million dollars. Yeah. Saying that she's old five years <laughs> of, of brother. And you know, so, and you know what's crazy? It was just a girlfriend. She's not even married. How? What do you think you ought to get? She Why said she has an aura. She has an aura agreement that she has an eleven-year contract. She lived out six. He needs to pay her for the other five years. Six aura million dollars a year. Yeah, I know, but what, yeah, that's what she gonna live. How, <laughs> <laughs> bro, bro. Well, I have an I have an oral agreement with um, Elon Musk that he's gonna give me half of his fortune next year. So I'm gonna be good, bro. Yeah. How about like you're, like what are we doing? Oral agreement? Yeah. That's that sounds so stupid that she could even bring that up. That a lawyer could even entertain that. That's nonsense. If exactly. a man would try to do that to a That's woman, I would never ever fly. Oral agreement. Come on, bro. You were a girlfriend. You lived a life with this dude. Your association to this dude is your only reason you're relevant at all, right? So be happy exactly. with that. You got it. And you know what? If you would have asked for a severance or something, like a lot of these females would do that. If she, Listen, she could have talked to the dude and be like, listen, um, only thing I'm looking for is this. When you leave, you know, boom, that's it. Like, take your L's, man. You had your chance. You got your fame. Well, you're in the network. It don't sound like it. It sounds like she was very disagreeable anyway. That's why he yeah. had to do the allure to send her to the airport because she wouldn't leave the yeah. house. So he had to come. <laughs> yeah, he had to get off the property. So she wasn't going to be agreeable. She wasn't going to come up with no solution like that. Just give me a second. Okay? But now she wants this bag on $30 million. But you're not going to do any of the things. She said for services rendered. <laughs> and so she ain't doing no more of these services, but she still want to get paid <laughs> for it. The I, I, I want to know That's what true. services that she rendered that has this um, residual effect where you can still get paid for for five years. $50 what million dollars stores, worth of uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear you, but uh, I'm just going to say no. <laughs> like, what about her... <laughs> What is it about Half her? Half a million, eight months. What is, what is it about her that's making it worth that? Nothing. What is it about her that's making it worth that? Like, are you kidding me? What? What? what Man. Come on, bro. Like, what he are got you doing so different? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen his the girls that he didn't pull out of Woolworth? Um, Tiger got a type. And this chick is oh, yeah, basic. Yeah, 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 yeah. True, true. Get out. Yeah. It's nothing yeah, about her worth. Yeah, but he likes oh, girls to do certain things. I think that's what it is. Um, he likes girls to do certain things. I'm pretty sure, even though they don't have a verbal agreement with that, I guarantee they have a written NDA. Oh yeah, oh he's uh, definitely NDA. like that's why like she can't go nowhere. Yeah, from from what he from what the rumors are, he you know what I mean, he do what it do. You know what I mean? So he <laughs> that's probably why he he will end up with a girl who looks basic, right? Because she's probably more functional when it's time for services rendered, right? So yeah, it, gotcha. she's probably more functional. So I don't think he's more so about the looks, but you know how it works. You ever see somebody get to the little race car, it don't look like nothing, but it'll it'll take you it'll, yeah. <laughs> take you up the track on it. <laughs> yeah, gotcha, gotcha. I think that's I think that's she where she at with it, man. But um, I, I think I think it's bogus in all honesty for someone to be able to get paid when you're no longer with them. That's that's crazy. Yeah. Um, I do understand the aspect of child support as much as we hate to see uh, CS on our paychecks. If that's what happens to us, um, I understand it because it's not the children's fault. They were they didn't ask to be here. Um, but I do think that there should be some caps on it. I do think there should be some caps on what a person can get. I don't care regardless of what you make. Right. But because the, mm -hmm. then you wouldn't try to get with this guy just for his money, because think about it. Let's say yeah. there's a tax on everything. Right. Um, if I'm getting unemployment. Even though I paid more into it than what this other person paid into it, there's still a max. I can't get mm -hmm. that. There's a max on it. So are you telling me based on your standards that I have to survive on this no matter what? I don't care what mm -hmm. you used to make. This is what we're going to give you. If I made 10 million dollars a year and then all of a sudden unemployment. You're maxed. It is what it is. You are maxed. Now, what is it? Why are you telling me that now that women don't have to be maxed with that? Mm. Why, why is it that 
There's no max on that. Because you, you already set the standard for me. If I lose my job, I'm only going to get such and such. And I'm told, tough cookie, this is what you're going to survive on. Now, this lady got with this guy. This There should be some type of max, some type of cap, some type of cutoff. Because now you have people who will just get with a guy with the sole purpose of taking half. The, the I, I feel like the American dream has now forget the white picket fence and the two car garage and this and that. The the American dream for the modern woman has become post marriage. <clears throat> Taking half. That's the American dream. <clears throat> Having a guy pay you for services rendered that you no longer provide. <clears throat> That's good, bro. Because it that sounds like their American dream is the man's American nightmare. And that's why brothers are <laughs> Would you brothers tell, are leaving, would you man. tell him? Would you tell him? Would you tell him? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why brothers are leaving, man. Like they yeah. tired of the game. They understand that these laws are not written in their benefit. That child support you speak of, the government don't care nothing about those kids, man. That's why they can put you no. in jail. Why? Oh, because a portion, bro. a percentage goes towards their retirement fund. Listen, bro. I got a whole I got a whole video on that joint. Check it out. <laughs> Wait till you see the shorts. I broke down the statistics and all of that. Uh prisons prisons make seventy four billion dollars a year. Just uh take that into consideration. They profit. Seventy four billion. Yeah, yeah, billion, not million. No billion profit, dollars a year. In the US. Just in the US, we have more people locked up per capita than anywhere else on the planet. All of these places the that are considered to be third world, we are the worst. 90% <laughs> of women are awarded custody of children. 90% of women are awarded custody of children, right? And the statistics, it's not for the children because the statistics show that men produce similar statistics from what you would find in a dual parent household. Women don't. Yeah. The failure rate... Yeah is crazy four times more likely to abuse drugs mm -hmm. commit suicide uh poverty yo <laughs> listen, man. Like, early yo. childhood yes the list yes. is a laundry list dude. everything everything all the all the way performance is low so when women are awarded the custody it's it's not it's not for the sake of the children because children actually perform not. worse under the care of a mother versus a father so then you have to and they know that because the statistical data is there they know that. <laughs> right. so then you gotta right. then you have to think about okay so why are you doing it what are you doing okay so if you have a fatherless nation it's a lot easier to feminize and emasculate men and make women masculine now a masculine woman is no threat a feminine man is no threat Mm -hmm. You can never have a revolution. You can never have people mm -hmm. question you. You can always have complete control over the situation if you're able to successfully mm -hmm. do that. Right? Turn take these fathers away so they're mindless souls. They have to they need you for everything. You know what I mean? You got to think about it. If we if the men who have their own independence they are not agreeable. They listen, they're thinkers. They will tell you that's BS if they believe it. They're not going to fall right. for it. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get that resistance. They can't have a bunch of that because then the leadership starts to change. You can't have your way. Your lineage can't have the way. People will be like, no, that's garbage. What are you trying to tell me? You can't you can't do that to me. And that's, this is not what they want. They want the easy road. So a lot of this is by design. It's up to gentlemen like me, you, to um, wake these people up, uh, inform men of what's going on, let them know what this master plan is. And it's by design. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you agree or you don't. You could show your thoughts on it. If you, if you feel like this is by design or this is coincidence? No, it's definitely by design because every man that speak up in this manner, they try to find a way to cancel him. <laughs> they, start, <laughs> they start stripping him of everything that they have investments in, everything that they build up, they'll start stripping it down. And they don't even have justifiable reasons. They say, we think you did. You could have done, and that's enough to strip <laughs> you down from everything. <laughs> Yeah, so. and, and uh, it's it's a scary thing. Um, that's why I try to um, convey my message in a way that's people can digest it.
take what I'm saying from it, but, you know, try to stay within the lines of the shadow banning and, you know, because, you know, it's it's tough, man, when you when you try to speak the truth. Uh, people really yeah. try to get at you. They really try to shut it down. It's tough. But um, I, I really do understand that it's, it's necessary. I'm not afraid. And I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do, at least my part, to make sure that the message gets out so we can build better men, build a better society. I'm not against women. And some people who listen to sound might sometimes think so. But the benefit of man is always for the benefit of women. Men mm, live for their absolutely. families. Masculine men live for their families. They honor their women. They honor their children. They respect and protect their family. That's what... Mm. If, so if you have a strong masculine man in your presence and they are for you, then that's going to help the women as well. But it starts Absolutely. with the man, no matter how you spin it. And y'all can take it how you want. <laughs> I, I am not going to eat those words. Listen, it is what it is. Yeah, I got time, Gus. Starts with the man. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't going back. You ain't changing now. <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't stand 10 toes. All right, I got you, bro. <laughs> it is what it is, man. You know? <laughs> man, man I, I looked at a statistic uh, about men and purpose. And it okay. says men that go through divorce find out that they lose purpose. Because most men, purpose is their family, their legacy. And when you strip a man away from his wife, strip him away from his kids, he he starts to lose who he is. He starts to lose. Right? Yeah. He lose yeah. why he's doing what he's doing. Because if you, I seen guys come to a job site and they will quit once they see how much child support taken out of. Like they just quit. They just walk off the job. <laughs> they see that chick, see child support taken out of it, and they would quit. And because it's almost like now I'm just living to pay a bill. I no longer have access to the kids like that. I no longer have access to that woman. All I'm doing now is just living to pay bills for the next X amount of years. And that's it. That's And that's no purpose. That don't give a man a sense of purpose. But when he had a family, he had a wife, he'll happily get up, do what he got to do, yep. sweat, mud, whatever he got to do. He'll get up and get it done because he's doing it Absolutely. for the betterment of that woman. And that's what men do. We we thrive to be providers. Like no matter how much you want to say, I can provide for myself. That's the number one thing that turned men off. Because what you're saying is you don't respect what men are because you are the man that you always wanted. If you want to be the man you always wanted, there's no need for me. Exactly. Exactly. So exactly. we can throw our hands up and let you be. I don't, I don't try to fight with no woman. I ain't going to tongue wrestle with you. I ain't going to argue with you. I'm not going to go back and forth with your combative spirit. If you <laughs> exactly. are this masculine woman, then you stay in that masculinity and be alone. <laughs> Kevin, exactly. Kevin Simpson that's, went by a dog and die alone. That's real. So, that's real. I'm not going to argue. Dude, I spent a year trying to talk to these women. Before I ever talked about this passport uh, and, and talk about traveling, I spent a year trying to encourage women. And when I did it, what well, all they <laughs> did was poop on everything. I mean, they will find the smallest thing. I made a post and I said, Christ you. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I made a post. I said, uh, we love you, black women. Man, you couldn't imagine how many negative comments no, I got out no. of. <laughs> Wait. All right. That was it. Like, there was give nothing me two, added to it. Three, give me two or three things that you could possibly say to that. Just one, even just even if it's like one or two. Just let me know what negative, what negative comment could they say to that? Yeah, what could, what could they say to that? Well, it's impossible for you to love black women to say the other posts that you post. It's impossible for you to love black women when you think so low of us. And I'm like, what have I said? I, I said, can you just show me a post? If you show me something negative, I said to black, black women, I take it down. I strip them all down right now. Show me one. <laughs> I made a, and the video that went viral for me, that's 1.4 million uh, views. I didn't say anything. It was a black woman talking about how 
these other women were uneducated. They were unlearned. These men are just getting over on them. And then the Thai, no, the Filipino lady responded. That's the only video. I just spliced them two things and put them together. What she had to say and the lady response, I put them together and uploaded. They, these black women came out. Oh, you hate black women. You, you crapping on us. The only reason you got a million views is because you crapping on us. You talking back. And I'm like, I didn't say a word. <laughs> the only person that's talking negative and bad is the black woman. Oh, what do you oh, see? A man, man ain't no man in the crazy. video. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. And because it, it got all these views and then the men come in, that's why I'm leaving, bro. Sign me up. Hey, if you start a program, bro, I want to sign up immediately. I want to get out of here. And then the women come in with all this, still want to argue, still want to be combative, still want to debate. And, and I tell them, do you not see what all the men are saying? Do you not see that you're being the problem? You're proving exactly what men say they don't want. And you keep giving us more of it. It's a freaking lemon, bro. <laughs> I don't care how nice you paint, get this paint job, put a new engine in it, and, and try to still... tell me. <laughs> the engine had water in it, bro. It's no good. Oh. <laughs> you keep giving me this lemon, <laughs> and you tell me it's good for me, but it's not what I want. Yeah, so, no, no, you can't, you can't, I, make, I, you I, can't make, you can't make me want it. You can't make me lie it. No, 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 and no, not happening. Can I? <laughs> do you mind if I hit a point real quick, bro? So I, went on, I started out trying to help black women. I speak positively about African okay. American women. So I switched it from that to just realizing it's a Western thing. So I no longer speak or mention black women. I just talk about the Western mindset is the problem because it doesn't matter if she's Hispanic. It doesn't matter if she's from Asia. It doesn't matter what she is. She's Caucasian. If she's here, that's a mindset that's being plagued here in the West. Oh, sure. So I yeah. talk about the mindset, not the woman. So I take them out the equation. They still put themselves in it because, you know, a hit dog bar. So they'll still put themselves in the equation even when I don't mention them. Then two, I make sure that I'm not I'm not doing what Kevin Samuels. They keep saying you the young Samuels or you the but oh, I hate when people Kevin do that. Samuels <laughs> was trying to help you. He was trying to give women advice that listen, this is what these men want. If you want this type of man, this is what he wants. And his first initial goal was trying to keep brothers from going overseas looking for wives. That's why he was trying to create the program he was doing on Facebook showing that there are wives here in the West. That was the whole thing he was doing. That's the whole reason he switched it from a men platform to women. But it blew up on his negative stuff because of world stock, of, of mm -hmm. negative sound bites. But his whole thing was, he was trying to show brothers that there are wives here. They hard to find, but they here. My content ain't about that at all. I say, forget <laughs> trying to find drops of rain in the ocean and just go where, where, where the rain clouds are. Go where the fresh water <laughs> is. Forget that. Just go where the lakes and the streams. <laughs> I mean, the world is bigger than this one little ocean. So let's just go where they are. So my whole content is let's find the best options for us. If, bro, if you're willing to learn Spanish, then, hey, Argentina, Honduras, or you know, DR is good for you. If you're not willing to learn it, hey, that's English speaking countries in Africa and the Philippines. And you could maybe find you one or two on Thailand. Get on Tinder, start learning what the people look like, start communicating with them and find out if that's good for you. And then brother, get on a plane and go check it out. So that's my content. Awesome. So th this has been, this has been a, um, an excellent one, man. I, I love everything that you had to say about this. has been extremely insightful. Um, hopefully, we're able to have you on soon enough. Pretty soon, I'm going to be doing some panels where, okay. um, you know, we'll bring a couple of people who I consider to be experts in this realm. Um, so we'll, you'll, you'll be invited to that for sure. We'll have some discussions and some things going on. It'll, it'll be good. We'll come up with some other great topics, man. This was this was a legitimate yeah. one. I, I'm, I appreciate you for um, actually helping to inform me on a lot of things that I may not have known as far as the uh, Passport Pro situations and just the, 
a lot of other general information you gave me today. That, it was definitely a good one here. Um, I want to give you the opportunity to let everyone know exactly where they can find you. Um, anything that you have going on right now, give them all your social media and as much as you can possibly give them so they can find you. Okay. So everything that I'm, I'm going to share, I'm going to give it over to you so you can put it in the link, but I'm at superior man on YouTube, um, Instagram and TikTok, and Facebook is the biggest platform that I've been using so far. And it's under Emmett Davis, E M M E T T. Davis, D-A-V-I-S. On there, I do The Superior Man. I drop a video every Saturday based on the audio book and the book, The Way of the Superior Man. It's 51 chapters. So every week we go through a chapter of The Superior Man. Um, and on Sundays, we do Men Talk Sundays, where men are open to have conversations just like this every single Sunday, because I believe in being a man advocate and that men having the outlets to be able to speak and talk and be heard. You know what I'm saying? So that's the two things that I focus on. And the last one is Kings Wanted. That is the platform I'm talking about um, monthly that I focus on the country, find the good, the bad, the ugly, and is it acceptable to you? Is this a place that you want to pursue or not? But every month for the next 12 months, we're gonna have a country, we're gonna have the people. I make sure I had the girls, I had them dancing, all kind of stuff. So oh, as good man. as it's fine, that's on Superior Man on um, YouTube. So that's awesome, it, awesome, brother. awesome. There we have it. So we are certainly gonna have every single one of those links in the description. And I would urge you to check him out. He's got a lot of good information, insight, and for any men who are looking to get into relationships or want advice on current relationships or just how to be a better man, men's improvement, health-wise, everything that we discussed in the beginning, man, he's got the insight on it. So I would urge you to check him out, subscribe to his channels, his social media, follow him there, and we're going to do all of that. Now I'm going to close the show like the champion that I am. I appreciate everybody for jumping in today and sharing their time with us. If you've gotten this far into the video i'm sure you've enjoyed it so please do hit that like button please do share this with a few people and if you are compelled and have not already please do subscribe we appreciate your patronage and as always stay hungry my friends never thirsty I like